Foster is more than just our home. It can also be used to study all of American history, from the first people who arrived thousands of years ago, through war, invention, prosperity, decline, and great change. Rochester has long been a part of many of the events which have shaped our nation. After the defeat of Great Britain in the American Revolution, many Native Americans, including the Iroquois, were coerced into giving up their land. In 1788, land speculators Oliver Phelps and Nathaniel Gorham negotiated the purchase of 2.6 million acres from the Seneca Indians. The agreement included a provision that a 100-acre tract be set aside on the west side of the Genesee River for a sawmill and a grist mill. Ebenezer Allen secured title to the mill lot and immediately began construction. By spring 1789, Allen's grist mill was completed and he moved onto the tract, becoming the first resident of what would eventually become Rochester. This helped to lead the industrial pathway for what would be known as the Flower City. The British Navy visited the mouth of the Genesee River at Charlotte four times over the course of the War of 1812, firing on it, imprisoning residents, and stealing provisions. By 1814, residents of what is today the northernmost part of Rochester had enough. When a large British fleet appeared offshore on May 14th, a group of locals devised a plan to protect their homes. By marching in and out of the woods, the Valiant 33 fooled the British into believing that a sizable force was defending Charlotte. The British retreated and never returned. Nathaniel Rochester, a former soldier and banker, bought a hundred acre plot of land along the Genesee River, including the land of Ebenezer Allen's mills. In 1817, with a population of 15 people, Nathaniel Rochester divided the land into streets and dubbed it the village of Rochesterville. Growing to over 1,000 acres and 2,500 residents by 1821, Rochesterville was considered to be the foundation of Monroe County. Its location on the Genesee River proved to be a vital aspect of life for Rochester for both water power and trade. In October 1825, the Erie Canal officially opened. The 363-mile-long waterway connected Buffalo to Albany cutting directly through Rochester on the way. Considered one of the world's greatest engineering feats, the canal spurred the United States' first great westward migration. It had a dramatic effect on Rochester, helping to transform it into America's first boomtown. Between 1822, when a section of the as yet incomplete canal opened from Rochester to Little Falls, and 1834, when Rochester became a city, its population more than quadrupled from 2,700 to 12,252. Rochester, having doubled its population, became known as America's first boomtown with the nickname the Young Lion of the West. Soon after its population jump, flour mills began to develop along the Genesee River as a means of energy power, and by 1838, Rochester became the leading flower supplier in the world. Rochester has also been known as a center for reform. Austin Stewart, born into slavery, escaped to Canandaigua and gained freedom through judicial actions. He then moved to Rochester to start his own grocery business. In his later life, he became involved in the anti-slavery movement and helped to oversee parts of the school desegregation reform movement. Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass would also rise as figureheads in Rochester, becoming the leading figures as abolitionists and reformers, speaking out against slavery and providing aid to fugitive slaves as an active part of the Underground Railroad. Susan B. Anthony, a Rochester resident, would gain national recognition for her work in the women's suffrage movement, while Douglass would publish his anti-slavery newspaper, The North Star, in downtown Rochester.